Hey, Newbie Dan here. In previous videos, I showed how to make fences for crosscut sleds out of either plywood or 2x4s. I also showed how to make runners either for normal miter slots or tabbed miter slots. Now we're going to put these pieces together to make a crosscut sled. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. Oh, and by the way, I'll be putting out an overview video that shows the entire process of building a crosscut sled from beginning to end. Check out the description below for information about that video or subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get notified when it's ready. But right now, stick around and learn the details of how I assemble and calibrate a crosscut sled. This video assumes you already have a set of fences, either the 2x4 or plywood kind. But if you haven't made them yet, that's okay, just keep watching. By the way, for the purposes of this video, I consider this the rear fence. I know some people call this the front fence, and I understand why. But as I said, for the purposes of this video, this is the rear fence. Don't cut a chamfer in the rear fence yet, otherwise it'll be difficult to put a square against the fence to align it. We'll cut the chamfer later. If you've already cut the chamfer, consider cutting it off. And if you don't know what a chamfer is, just keep watching. I'm also assuming you already have a runner, either for normal miter slots or for tabbed miter slots. You may have already attached the runner to the sled base, and that's okay, but if you haven't already attached it, hold off on that for a little longer. Whether you use fences made out of 2x4s or plywood, the procedure for making the sled is the same. So for this video, I'll mostly only be using the plywood fences. I'm making the sled base out of half-inch Baltic birch plywood, but any half-decent plywood will do, or probably most any kind of wood for that matter. Your sled base should start off a little wider than your fences. It should be wider by at least the width of your table saw's blade. I chose the dimensions I'm using in this video based mostly on the scrap wood I had available. Feel free to change the dimensions. The fences are 15 and 3 quarter inches wide, so I cut the base to about 15 and 7 eighths inches wide. The depth is around 15 and a half inches. For reference, my existing 2x4 sled is about 2 inches wider and an inch deeper, give or take. Both sets of fences are a little under 3 inches tall. In the next few steps, we're going to mark where the fences will be so we know where to drill the pilot holes for the screws. First, decide which side of the base you want facing up and which edge should be the rear. It might just be an arbitrary decision, but decide anyway. For my base, one edge was splintered a little. I know the front fence will be flush with the edge, and it'll cover the splinters, so this became the front. If you've already attached the runner, you've already made this decision. We want to draw a line where the center of the rear fence will be. We'll be attaching our rear fence one and a half inches in to leave room for the blade guard. By the way, if you made the 2x4 fences for my video, you probably haven't created a blade guard yet, since I didn't talk about it in the video, and that's okay. I'll show you how to make the blade guard in this video. So flip the base over, keeping the rear edge facing you. Measure the thickness of your rear fence. I'm going to call mine one and a half inches. So the line goes one and a half inches in for the blade guard, plus half the thickness of the fence, which in my case is three quarters of an inch. So that means I need to draw my line at two and a quarter inches. So I make my marks. Then I check them against the fence and blade guard, just to make sure the mark is in the middle of the fence. And again, if you don't have a blade guard yet, just move the fence in one and a half inches. Looks good, so I draw my line. If you've already attached the runner, just work around it as best you can. Now we want to draw a line where the center of the front fence will be. Since the front fence is flush with the edge, just divide the thickness of the front fence in half. If I were using my 2x4 front fence, it's about one and a quarter inches thick, so I'd be drawing the line at half that, or five eighths of an inch. But my plywood fence is around three quarters of an inch thick, so I draw the line at three eighths of an inch. If you've watched my videos on cutting your own runners, then you already know how to attach them, but I'll show it again here. By the way, if you have a tabbed miter slot, see my video on making runners for them, which includes how to attach the runner to the sled base, and you can skip the rest of this section if you want. Decide where you want your sled positioned on your table saw. Where do you want the kerf? Then snug up your rip fence and clamp it down. Put something like pennies or washers or nuts in the miter slot to bring the runner up a little above the surface of your table saw. 
but don't bring it up too much above the surface or it might end up at an odd angle when the glue dries. For me, the nuts brought it up too high, so I'm using washers. They bring it just barely above the surface, so I'm using a piece of scrap wood to double check that it really is above the surface and it looks good. Put some glue on the runner. I'm using Type Bond too. Last week I enlarged the hole in my squeeze bottle and I'm still not used to it, so I had to clean off some of the extra glue. If you want, you can put some painter's tape on your table saw to catch the squeeze out. Then position the sled base against your rip fence, facing up with the rear facing you, and lower it down onto the runner. Press down to get a good seal. Then put some weights on it and let it dry for a couple of hours. Once it's dry, remove the weights and check the results. I needed to clean up a little glue on my table saw. Then I checked the runner and I've got some squeeze out I need to get rid of. I'm using a cabinet scraper to get rid of the squeeze out. It's a great tool for the job. There's a link in the description below. It still doesn't slide well in the slot, so I'm using some sandpaper that I attached to a piece of scrap wood with spray adhesive. After a few tries, it fits great. It should slide smoothly with no side-to-side -side movement. After that, you might want to sand a little off the sharp edges, so it's easier to slide the runner into the slot. This may not make complete sense at the start, but just bear with me and it'll make sense later on. We're going to cut off part of the sled base, so we have a side that's exactly parallel to the blade, which we'll use to align the fence. Then we'll put the base back together. I know, just trust me on this. So put your sled base in the miter slot. But before you cut it, and I forgot this part, put a mark on the end of the edge that has the runner on it. I just put an X here. Actually, since I was trying to stay out of the way of the camera, it looks more like a squash spider, but whatever. Now cut off part of the base. Obviously don't throw that part away, we'll need it shortly. Even though I covered making fences in other videos, I need to repeat one thing here. It's very important for the face of the rear fence to be as straight as possible. I know I harp on this a lot, so I thought I'd try to demonstrate why this is important. Here's a bowed fence. Yes, I know it's ridiculously exaggerated, but it's to make a point. This is the kerf line. In other words, this is where the saw blade will go. I want the fence exactly square to the kerf line, so I use a precision square and line it up based on where the square touches the fence, which is right here. Now if I cut a short piece on the sled and position it against the same spot on the fence that the square was on earlier, I'll probably get a square cut. So that'll make me think it's aligned correctly. But if I put a longer piece against the fence and hold it against the fence down here, see how the cut won't be square anymore? Again, I know this is exaggerated, but I hope it illustrates the point. The face of the back fence must be as straight as you can get it, or else you'll get inconsistent cuts, and you'll constantly be trying to get it aligned right, thinking that nothing in the world makes sense anymore. At least that's what happened to me. Okay, on to attaching the rear fence. We're going to attach the rear fence to the sled by one screw, so it pivots like this, so we can align the fence. Take the part of the sled base with the runner attached and flip it over so the runner is facing up and the marked edge is closest to you. Prop the base up on your fences and make sure the rear fence is closest to you. And if you've rounded over the corners, make sure they're on the bottom. On the corner where you put your mark, get the rear fence flush with the side of the base and centered underneath the line as much as possible. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're only going to drill this one hole, so focus on that for now. Then clamp it down. I'll be using one and a quarter inch Spax construction screws here. Make sure you use something like Spax or GRK screws if you have a choice, because you'll be unattaching and reattaching the fence at least once. About three quarters of an inch or so in from the side, on the center line, drill a pilot hole with a small bit. I'm using a 3 32nd inch bit, or it might even be a 5 64th inch bit. You only want a small diameter pilot hole, so the screws are held in nice and tight. Then drill the countersink. I'm not using my countersink drill bits here because I wanted a smaller diameter hole than they make. Then drive the screw. Take extra care to make sure you don't strip the screw hole. But if you do, take a wooden match, stuff the end of it down in the hole and break it off. If you want, you can add glue before you stick it down in the hole. Then drill the pilot hole and try again. Put the sled back in the miter slot. FYI, I had to reshoot part of this. So ignore the kerf here and the screw holes here. As I said previously, we know that this edge is perfectly parallel with the blade because the blade cut this edge. 
We've got our fence held down by one screw here so it can pivot. So all we have to do is adjust the fence to be square with this edge. At this point, in order to square the fence, I normally recommend a method I learned from a Matthias Wandel video. And you can continue to use this method if you want because most of the time it works okay. But while I was shooting this video, I discovered a potential flaw with this method. And I'm actually glad it happened while I was filming because now I can show you exactly what the flaw is and how to avoid it. So I would normally recommend that you put a straight edge against the inside edge of the base. And if your front fence is straight, I'd say you could use that. This allows you to place a carpenter square or other type of square against these two edges and you can pivot the fence until it's square with the straight edge. The rest of the steps that follow still work okay. So let's go through them so you can see what happened and then I'll show you how to fix it. Once you have the fence aligned, slide the sled back enough so you can attach a clamp. For this type of clamp, I like to attach it from the end like this so it doesn't pull the fence out of alignment. Then I double check to make sure it's still aligned correctly and take it back to my workbench carefully, trying not to change the alignment. I flip it over and place it on the workbench with the clamp hanging over the edge like this. Don't clamp it down to your workbench because you might knock the fence out of alignment. Drill a pilot hole somewhere near the edge, but remember that the blade will be cutting near here, so don't make it too close to the edge. Then countersink and drive a screw. Again, be careful not to strip the hole. Then take it back to the table saw and double check that it's still square. Now take a piece of scrap wood and mark the number 1 in a corner. Place it against the fence like this with a number here and make the cut. Then check it for square. One cut looks good, but let's do the 5 cut method made popular by William Ng and make sure it's square. Place the edge we just cut against the fence and make another cut. Then put that edge against the fence and make another cut and continue until the number 1 is back in the original location. By the way, make sure there's no sawdust between the fence and the stock. Now we make one final cut. Here's the number 1 and this is the corner to check. If your fence isn't square, this corner will be out of square by a compounded amount, making it easier to detect. And guess what? It's not square. It isn't off by a lot, but it's definitely off. It's hard to capture on video, but I can see daylight between the square and the wood. I could leave it like this, and for many of you this would probably be fine. But I've never had it be off before, so I have to figure out what's wrong. Now's the perfect time to take you through some troubleshooting tips that you can use when your fence isn't aligned properly. The first thing to check is to make sure your square really is square. Not all squares are actually square, and some are close enough for a lot of work, but may not be the right tool for this job. I know these precision squares are really square, and the case keeps them from getting banged up, so I know these aren't the problem. I double check that the fence is still square, and it sure looks like it. I even try the 2x4 fence as a straight edge to see if that makes a difference, but it still looks square. I try a bigger precision square, and it still looks okay. I know my runner is snug in the miter slot, so that's not the problem. So I wonder if the problem was that the scrap piece I cut was too rectangular, and when I cut the long edge, it wiggled a little, so I try again with a relatively square piece of scrap wood. Although in retrospect, I should have used a larger piece of wood, so I would have had more surface area to put against the precision square, but in this case it didn't make a difference. And that's because it's still off. So I double check my fence to make sure its face is straight, and it is. And then inspiration hits. At first, I was thinking that maybe the straight edge I was using against the base wasn't actually straight. And if you're going to use this method, you should definitely check this. But that got me rethinking the whole alignment process. What are we actually trying to accomplish here? When we align the fence, we don't really care if it's square to the straight edge. We care if it's square to the inside edge of the base. So why am I adding one more possible variable to the equation? If all I had available to check for squareness was carpenter squares or something similar, then it would make sense. But I have these precision squares. One end of these squares is thick, which means it'll hang over the edge of the base. And that means I can use it to check if the fence is square to the actual edge cut by the blade. No extra variables, like is my straight edge actually straight, or am I holding it against the base properly? And when I check it this way, guess what? The fence is not perfectly square. It's not off by much, but it is, in fact, not perfectly square. So let's do this again and do it right. I'll make it quick. I remove the second screw I added, and I bring the sled back to the drawing board. I mean table saw. I use my precision square to align the fence. I'm using my biggest square, by the way. 
Then I clamp and double check and take the sled back over to the workbench. I drill and countersink a new hole and drive the screw into that hole. Then I take it back to the table saw, which is hard to do with my fingers crossed. I double check with the precision square again, then go through the five cut method. And what do you know, it's perfect. So now that that's out of the way, we can attach everything else. Put the other part of the base on the fence, butt it up against the existing base piece, align the lines, and clamp it down. Drill, countersink, and drive however many screws you think you need, but remember not to get the inside screw too close to where the blade will go, and remember not to strip the screws. Then we'll attach the front fence. Flip the sled around and put the front fence under the sled flush with the front edge, then clamp it down. I'm going to use my countersink drill bit here to speed things up because it's not as critical for the screws to be as tight as possible since we don't really care if the front fence is perfectly aligned or not. I countersink and drive one screw in each side of the base just to make sure it stays in the right place. Then I drill all the remaining holes and drive the remaining screws. Don't forget to keep the screws away from where the kerf will be. We're going to cut the kerf now. You need to remember that after you cut the kerf, and as you continue to use the sled, the only thing holding both sides of the base together will be the portion of the fences that haven't been cut. So you don't want to cut too high up on the fences. If that's an issue, then you may need to make taller fences. Raise your blade up to the height you want, then cut the kerf. Be careful if the blade comes through the rear fence, because we haven't attached the blade guard yet. Don't get your hand too close to the blade. Once that's done, cut a piece of scrap wood and make sure the cut is square. At this point, there's no reason for it not to be square, but it never hurts to check. And, as expected, it's square. Now we want to cut the chamfer in the rear fence. A chamfer is basically just a beveled edge, like this. It helps channel away sawdust, so the sawdust doesn't get between the fence and your stock. Take the rear fence off the sled. But before you take it away, put an arrow on the bottom of the fence pointing towards the inside of the sled. This is very important. There's lots of ways you can cut a chamfer. You can use your table saw with the blade angled at 45 degrees. You could use a chamfer router bit like this. Or you can go the easy route and just use a sander to make the chamfer. The arrow you drew earlier points to the edge that gets the chamfer. Hold the sander at about 45 degrees and make the chamfer. It doesn't need to be very big. And in fact, you don't want it too big or thin stock will slide into it. This is about right. I've put some screws in this picture to add some perspective. Once you've made the chamfer, it's time to reattach the fence. Put the rear fence upside down on your workbench with the arrow pointing away from you. Then put the sled base on the fence, but position it so the fence doesn't cover the screw holes. Now drive your screws just a little ways into the holes with the points sticking out a little on the other side. I usually put my finger lightly over the hole and stop when the screw sticks through about this much. Obviously, you need to be careful you don't actually drive the screw into your finger. I'll finish the rest of the screws. Then line up the points with the existing holes in the rear fence. Make sure you get this right. Set your drill's clutch to a low number at the start, so if you missed a hole, the screw won't be able to make a new hole. If your drill doesn't have a clutch, just be extra careful to get the screws into the existing holes. Now drive the screws partway in, enough so you're sure the screws are actually going into the existing holes in the fence. Then tighten your clutch, but not enough to strip the holes, and finish driving the screws all the way in. It's a good idea to cut another scrap piece to make sure you still got a nice square corner, just in case. But as long as you put the correct side of the fence facing in, and the screws went into the existing holes in the fence instead of making new holes, then it should be fine. Here's the blade guard we made in my previous video on making fences out of plywood. It's just two pieces of three quarter inch plywood glued together, and I rounded over the edge with a sander. If you haven't already made your blade guard, either make one like this out of plywood, or I'll show you how to make one quickly out of a piece of 2x4. I usually make the blade guard about 1.5 inches deep and 1.5 inches wide, give or take, so a 2x4 works great. I'm going to cut a piece either the same height as my fence or maybe a little shorter, and I get to use my new sled for this. But it looks like when I cut the kerf, I didn't raise the blade high enough, so the cuts in the fences aren't tall enough, and the sled is being lifted up by the riving knife. But no problem, just cut them again. I also sanded the splinters off, but I did that off camera. Now I can make the cut.
I figure out how long to make the blade guard, and I cut it. There we go. You could sand it or leave it like it is. Attaching the blade guard to the fence is easy. Put glue on the side of the blade guard that faces the fence, but don't put glue near the bottom because we don't want squeeze out on the sled base. Find the spot where the blade comes through the fence and put the blade guard over that spot. Clamp it to the fence, clean up the squeeze out, and let it dry for a couple of hours. That's all there is to it. When everything's done, feel free to do whatever type of finishing you want. You can sand the bottom of the base if you want, but I usually don't sand the top because I don't want my stock to slide around too easily. You can wax the bottom if you want to make it slide nice and smooth. Personally, I don't like the smell of wax, and it seems to stick around forever. I recently bought this product called Slidees from Amazon for less than $10. It has the same kind of texture as wax, but it smells nice. It seems to work just like wax. There's a link in the description below. If you want to add some lacquer or something, go for it. I spray lacquered my 2x4 fences and lightly spray lacquered the top of the sled base. But I really and truly suck at applying any kind of finish, so you'll need to go somewhere else for more information on that subject. All in all, I think the sled with the 2x4 fences looks pretty good, and so does the sled with the plywood fences. They both work equally well, so it's really up to you to decide which kind of fences you prefer. To me, having a reliable crosscut sled is a real pleasure. I hope it will be for you, too. And I sure hope you enjoyed this series of videos. I'm sure I'll put out some more videos in the series, but this video is the culmination of the main part, or at least part one. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider leaving a comment. Thanks! This video is part of an ongoing series about table saw sleds, which includes crosscut sleds, box joint sleds, runners, fences, or whatever else I can think of or you can suggest. So make sure you keep an eye open for other videos in this series. Check out the description for links to products seen in this video. Just scroll down, click Show More, and scroll down until you see the links. And if you like what I do here, click that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that bell to get notified about new videos. Thanks!